Hi, I'm Anika Allen and welcome to Flavor Mag Presents Google's Top Black Talent, a monthly series showcasing inspirational people from various industries and we're building a community of successful black professionals. And if you have a question for our engineers today, then go to flavormag.co.uk forward slash TBT, log on, submit the details there and we'll get back to you or we might ask the engineers your question. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking to five talented engineers. My Google co-host today, Adi Oshinye, is one of them. So he's worked with, a lot of them have worked with products and projects that you may have used or heard of. So, Adi, how are you? I'm great, thanks. I think one of the things that it's important to mention about software engineering is that software is behind everything in our world today, from our phones, our cars, whether they're self-driving or not, <laughs> the shoes we wear, and of course, the makeup you're wearing. <laughs> Personally, I don't wear makeup that often. <laughs> you know, none of those things kind of come to my mind when I think of engineering. So I think today is going to be a real eye opener in terms of the projects and everything that you guys have worked with. I mean, how did you get into engineering? So when I was seven, I persuaded my parents that they should buy me a computer because they would help me with my homework. <laughs> and they fell for it. Okay. <laughs> and so what, how did you know that was engineering was what you wanted to do? Well, it was a combination of being unfit for any other work and <laughs> the fact that I was actually quite good at it. Okay. And people wanted me to, to pay me money to do it. If you had to, for those watching and then not having a clue of what engineering is, if you had to summarise it in kind of one sentence, what would you say engineering is? I would say it's about applying technology to solving problems that people have. Okay. And it's such a big field. How did you decide the area kind of that you wanted to go into? Well, I sort of stumbled into it. I've done various things. Before Google, I used to work in investment banks doing IT systems there. It's sort of, you stumble into things based on the opportunities that come up. Okay. I mean, was it hard to get your first job in engineering? So, the first job wasn't actually that hard. I had a job just before I left university. Okay. But um, the second job is actually the harder one mm -hmm. because you get the first job as a graduate and the second one, they actually expect you to know how to do stuff. Mm. So what kind of stuff did you have to know for that first initial job? So the first initial job, they wanted me to know Java, to know C++, to know Unix, and to be willing to work for very little money. <laughs> but what they didn't realize was that the software industry's definition of very little money was much better than the average student's pay. So. Mm. And as an engineer, what skills do you think people need to, kind of, to go into this career? Well, you need to be analytical, you need to be good at solving problems, you need to be good at learning new technologies. And so how did you get your job at Google? Well, the explanation I like is that, which, which is, happens to be true, but isn't that fun. I had a friend who was working in Google. He said, you should come and work at Google. It's a real company, not a dot com. <laughs> And he referred me and I applied. I went through the interviews. The interviews were actually quite fun. Mm, okay. And then they offered me a job. You say they were fun. Fun in what way? Well, they were fun in that people asked me questions about solving interesting problems. One of my favorites was, how would you go about writing an algorithm to generate a ransom note? Okay. Given a stack of newspapers. Mm, interesting question. I mean, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> But um, so when you kind of got into Google, kind of what, did you th what were your perceptions of Google before you started working here? So when I joined, before I joined Google, I thought it would be like the dot com I'd worked for in the past. Lots of fun stuff, but very little in the way of things that made a difference in the world. Mm. But when I joined Google, I realized that a lot of things Google does and is doing and is planning to do that actually are have a very large impact on normal people's everyday life. Mm. Whereas the companies that worked for in the past, we did things that were interesting technically, okay. but didn't have much direct impact on the people you'd see on the bus. Fantastic. So, I mean, so talk me through some of the projects that you've worked on. So I've worked on various sort of infrastructural things. I've worked on a bunch of mobile search things at Google. I've worked on a bunch of ads things. But the one I'm probably happiest about that I've done recently is the photo booth project that we did at Westfield in Stratford. Okay. So everybody who went to see the Olympics would see this giant black photo booth and you could go into that mm. and have a photo of yourself taken and we would email it to you or share with you using Google+. Fantastic, I love photo booths. <laughs> I mean, are there any other kind of products that kind of we use in everyday life that you've kind of worked on or had a hand in? So the nice thing with the photo booth is that it's actually taking the existing open source code to Chromium, mm. the open source version of Chrome, 
and I've made my own custom version, which is okay. what we use in the photo booth. But I've also worked on a few things, small bits in things like search, small things in ads, small bits in the way Google integrates with other companies. Mm. And of course, I wrote a book, <laughs> which um, my publisher really insists I, I plug. <laughs> Please buy my book. <laughs> Or you can get it for free online, actually. It's <laughs> <laughs> so what do you love most about your job? What I love most of my job is the autonomy to create new, to extend the job in new ways, mm. to do new things that nobody else has done before. And the biggest challenge? I would say the biggest challenge is that the people I work with are spread out all over the world. And so you have to be flexible, you have to be adaptable, you have to be willing to travel. Mm. So last week, for example, I was in Milan getting bitten by mosquitoes. Okay. So that's in Google office in Milan, yes. where you were. So, I mean, what's the most exciting thing about what you do? Well, I think the most exciting thing about what I do is the people I work with, because they're very, very smart. They're very, very creative. Mm. And you have to resist the temptation when somebody suggests something to say, that's crazy, that'll never work. Mm. Because, well, we've done crazier things and they've worked. Amazing. So thank you, Ade, that was all very insightful. Um, and so you mentioned your book there, and I think we're going to give, give two copies of that away. So um, how can they win a copy? And tell us a bit about the book. Well, there's going to be a competition on your website, I think. Yeah. But the book is, so I spent four and a half years working with a guy called Dave Hoover, based in Chicago, on this book. It's about learning to learn to be a programmer. Mm -hmm. Ironically, we'd been working on the book for about two years before we actually ever met in person. Oh, wow. Is that because you're just doing everything online? Exactly. Amazing. So if you do want to win a copy of the book, make sure you go to www.flavormag.co.uk forward slash TBT and you'll find out all the details there on how you can win a copy of that book if you don't want to be an engineer out there. So good luck to all our entrants and I think it's time we hear from the other engineers on our panel. Great. So I'd like you to introduce you to Joseph Kwashi and Rodley Lendor. Go ahead with us in the studio. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we also have a couple of people joining us for our hangout. So, Debbie Sterling is joining us from Los Angeles. Hi, Hi Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> and my fellow Googler, Mary Azum. I'm Azuming. Ah, okay, I've mangled your name. I'm terribly sorry. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> uh, so, Mary is based in our Paris office. Amazing. So, um, I'm going to start off with you, Joseph. Um, so, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I'm a project engineer. Um, I work at Network Rail. Okay. I currently work on the Thameslink program. Um, <clears throat> what we're doing there is trying to increase the capacity on the, the network in the central London area. Okay. Um, so I trained as a mechanical engineer and uh, I made a transition into um, signaling engineering within the, the railway industry. Fantastic. Well, I think we're going to go and see a bit of a video of your project that you're working on. So when did you know you wanted to become an engineer? I would say when I was about nine years old. Um, I was definitely in primary school. Um, I always um, enjoyed making things, understanding how things work. Um, I had a creative side to me as well. So I tried to make sure that I was able to use those kind of things in, in uh, my career going forward. Great. So Rodney, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about you, your background. Sure, I'm Rodney Landor. I am a network implementation Solutions Engineer at Service, mm -hmm. it's a cloud comp global leader in cloud computing and managed hosting. Um, in my spare time, I'm the chairman of the Berkshire Local Network for the Institute of Engineering and Technology. Sounds like you're a very busy man. Very busy, <laughs> yes. So Debbie, um, before we get to introduce you, we're going to kind of play a video, I think that summarizes kind of what Goldie Blocks is all about. I'm an engineer from Stanford, and I was always bothered by how few women there were in my program, so I've decided to do something about it. I'm starting a toy company called Goldie Blocks to get little girls to love engineering as much as I do. 
Goldie Blocks is a book and a construction toy combined. It stars Goldie, the girl inventor, and her motley crew of friends who go on adventures and solve problems by building simple machines. As girls read along, they get to build what Goldie builds using their toolkit. I grew up in a small town in Rhode Island. My parents' dream was for me to become an actress. They never bought me Legos, they didn't buy me Connects or Lincoln Logs. It didn't occur to them, or me either. These toys develop spatial skills and get kids interested in engineering and science. I didn't even know what engineering was until I was a senior in high school. So to me, Goldie Blocks really is the toy that I wish I had growing up. That's it. Well, you mentioned that, Debbie, that um, you didn't know what engineering was till you were a senior in high school. So what made you decide you wanted to go into that field? Well, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Okay. So my math teacher, my senior year of high school, suggested I make one engineering when she was helping me write my recommendation letter for college. And I remember when she said that, I thought she was crazy because I thought that engineers were train drivers. <laughs> And so when I got off to college my freshman year, uh, I couldn't decide what to major in. I was trying out all these different classes, and I couldn't forget that suggestion that she had made the year before. So I tried Mechanical Engineering 101. And it was an incredible class. I absolutely loved it, and I decided to play with my major. Amazing. Well, we'll find out more about you later. So um, tell us a bit about yourself, Marie. And it's funny because I have quite the same story as Debbie. It was in the last year of high school that I discovered engineering through my math teacher as well. Mm -hmm. I had a really good relationship with And I think she was the game changer because I saw all this math technology stuff at high school and I was more into you know, being creative and, and I would say womenly stuff. And she really helped me and showed me how I could use my creativity into this. And that's how I got to it and I chose the sphere of college. Fantastic. Well, before Ade gets to his question for you guys, I just wanted to ask, um, since the two ladies are joining us via Hangout, I mean, how hard is it for a woman kind of working in the engineering industry? Well, I'll go first. Yeah. Myself, uh, yeah. when I arrived at the engineering school, that's how we call them in France, mm. actually we were five girls out of a hundred people. So first, first weeks were really hard. And then you learn how to like use your femininity into your work because we have, I think, some some different sensitivity and using that in the engineering work, work actually helped me a lot. And, and all the guys in, the, in, the, in my promotion, they were actually really nice. And the fact that we were so few girls, it was something <laughs> that helped me like liking more and more these this lessons and what we were learning. About. And that's it. What about you, Debbie? Well, for me, it was a challenge. I definitely felt like a minority. Uh, there weren't a lot of women, which is actually how I found my passion for creating construction toys to get little girls interested in engineering with the hopes that we will increase our numbers. Hmm. But I will say that being a woman in engineering is a huge advantage for what I do now because I have a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. I was once a little girl and there's no one better than me to understand little girls and what makes them tick and engineer kind of solutions for them. Amazing. <laughs> so, Ade, over to you. So, I'm curious, um, what were the key skills you needed to break into the industry? Um, I think definitely having an analytical mind, being able to solve problems, um, having good mathematical skills, those are probably the key skills. Um, yeah, to add on top of um, what Joseph mentioned as well, I think it also helps have a good imagination because a lot of the times the solutions you're looking for don't present themselves in the normal way. And so probably what happens here at Google as well, you, you're thinking outside the box and it looks crazy, but then when you start to apply the mathematics and a bit of physics behind it, you say, well, actually, this is a plausible, usable solution. What's a typical work day like for you? Is that for both of us? Yeah. Um, I guess for myself, it would be um, potentially working with um, other project engineers that work on other projects within my program, um, looking for um, synergies that we can identify so we can um, deliver our projects more efficiently. 
Um, I also review train specifications to understand more about or to try to understand how the train that we're introducing onto the network is going to operate mm -hmm. and how it's going to interface with the signaling system that we're trying to implement um, so that we can make sure that there aren't any incompatibilities between the train and the infrastructure. Um, and um, I also spend quite a lot of time um, managing our suppliers as well. So okay. um, I could end up uh, reviewing their design submissions, for example. What about you, Adi? A lot of my day, uh, early mornings are spent speaking with uh, Chennai, India and Singapore, trying to find out what problems they've encountered during their day and if I can help fix it for them or also do handovers from themselves. Uh, then it goes into our local EMEA or Europe, Middle East, Africa group of customers and what are the things that they need getting done that day. And uh, towards the afternoon, tapering about three o'clock, I start speaking with our US offices. Uh, sometimes we get conference calls with guys in Argentina, Mexico and St. Louis, Missouri all at the same time. So a lot of communication, a lot of trying to find out where everybody else is at and what's left outstanding to be done that day. Okay, fantastic. Great. So, Marie, what's your work day like? So, my, my work day, like the last engineering project I did, because now I work in marketing at Google, it was really trying to go to every single team that was a contributor to my program and really make sure that they were on track and that they will deliver at the due date. And if not, what was the risk and how to evaluate that? So, that, I, it was a lot of project management at that time. And you, Debbie? Um, well, I'm an entrepreneur and a CEO as well as an engineer. So every single day is like literally like a crazy circus fest. <laughs> like no, no one day is the same as the next. I'll be one day. I'll be um, traveling in China, meeting with our factories, trying to get efficiencies in the product design of the toy. To the next day, I'll be in New York on national TV and meeting with Nickelodeon to the next day, um, cleaning our office and sending mail. So <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, what would you each, we'll start with you, um, what would you say is your greatest strength and your greatest weakness? And actually, I'm going to start with Ade <laughs> in engineering. <laughs> well, that's difficult. I would say my greatest strength is that I never, I, I basically find it really hard to do things the same way as everybody else. Okay. So I always want to find a different way. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's a better way, sometimes <laughs> it's the worst way. But my greatest weakness, well, I think, you know, the cheesy interview thing you're meant to say is your greatest weakness is your perfectionism. <laughs> but I would say actually my greatest weakness is my complete and utter lack of weaknesses. <laughs> and my modesty. <laughs> and your modesty. <laughs> what about you? I think for myself, it would be uh, attention to detail. Mm. Um, in a lot of the work that I've done in my previous roles, or previous careers, uh, I was a design engineer. And when you're obviously developing the design, you need to make sure that there are no flaws, uh, mm. make sure you've considered everything. So by having um, that perseverance and having an attention to detail, mm. it enables you to make sure that your designs are, um, are robust. Um, in terms of weaknesses, um, I would say, Sometimes you don't know when to stop and you, you keep looking and checking for mistakes. So. Oh, and you, Adi? I think my greatest strength is, just, is the ability to learn quickly. So the technology is, there's a lot of it and it changes very quickly. And sometimes as in your company, new product sets are being released all the time as it grows. So it's the mm. ability to learn what their limitations are, what their strengths are and apply that and be able to deliver it to the customer. Um, my weakness, and it's quite embarrassing, is that I sometimes don't get it when people don't see things the same way I do. So in my mind, it's very clear. It's crystal clear. And you can see their faces are like, what, what is he going on about? <laughs> type of thing. And Marie and Debbie, um, let's start with Debbie. What do you, what's your greatest strength and your greatest weakness when it comes to engineering? Um, I think my greatest strength is my willingness to just um, give stuff a try, whether it works or doesn't work, my willingness to take risks and learn from failure. Um, my biggest weakness related to engineering. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know if it's as much related to engineering, but my biggest weakness right now that I'm working through is I don't celebrate our successes enough. So when something really exciting happens, 
I, you know, we don't, I don't think to like, you know, take the team out to lunch or celebrate uh, mm. the way that we really should. And so I'm trying to figure out how to do that more. Definitely, you guys work on such amazing projects. You should celebrate every time you kind of <laughs> reach a goal. And lastly, Guy Marie? So I think my, my greatest weakness is that I maybe spend too much time on details and sometimes I get too focused on that. And for the strengths, I think it's that I don't take no as an answer. Like if someone says, no, we can't do this, I will fight for it. And I think I'm quite good at it. So I want a tip from each of you now in terms of there's loads of people watching and they want to have a career in engineering. What's your tip? What do they need to do to be where you are? I would say, firstly, I know there's a lot of, a lot of people are afraid of mathematics and physics. And to be honest, in engineering, that's your, that's your tool set. That is where you'll always start and always refer to. Mm -hmm. And I would say not to be put off by that. It's definitely going to be challenging as first, but like all things, the more you apply yourself to it, the more you practice it, the easier it would become. And also just to, to keep on playing with the things that you get. I mean, in terms of, I spent a lot of my childhood building models. Uh, some of them worked. I had rockets. I did like a thousand feet. I, I made a telephone, things of that nature. So you tend to see the engineers from a young age are the ones playing with um, Lego, building things. And I think as parents, you need to also support that as well. And definitely, you know, bit by bit, you will get there. Great answer. How about you, Joseph? What's your tip? I would say um, you need to be able to, if I, if I look at it from an interviewer's perspective, somebody who's looking to recruit someone, um, they always look for somebody who has demonstrated that they have applied um, the principles of engineering outside of a classroom environment. So they like people who, like Rodney, um, who have tried to build things at home. So it might mean you get involved with a local club, um, maybe somebody older than yourself um, that has access to equipment. Um, it might be doing a summer school or something like that. Just show that you have tried to apply the principles of engineering. Um, it doesn't matter if it's on a big or small scale, but show that you have that level of enthusiasm. And uh, you will also learn a lot from it as well, rather than relying purely on um, the theory in the textbook. And you, Debbie, if um, Debbie and Marie, if you can keep your, your answers a bit shorter, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my advice would be um, to not get discouraged if you, don't, if you start studying engineering and you don't get straight A's, um, <laughs> to not give up on it, because there's a lot of different types of engineering, all different fields, and I'll venture a guess, you probably won't love all of them, but there may be one that you do, so not to get discouraged. And you, Marie? And my advice would be to really try to get help from people who know what already engineers or teachers or people that actually can help you and can give you, I don't know, extra lessons. Because for me, that was really valuable. Fantastic. So we're going to play a really, really quick game with you guys. So um, this is called Super Sync Sports. It's available on Google Chrome. And um, it's a really fun game where you can kind of swim, cycle, and run. And you can do it on your mobile phones and tablets. So if you can, guys can get your mobiles out, I think everyone's going to play it because it only has four players. So Debbie can't play. Sorry, Debbie. But <laughs> still stay there and hang out. So if you guys go to um, g.co slash super. Yay. <laughs> And then the second step is for you to enter a code. And once that code's entered, you'll kind of go into another screen and you'll get to choose a character. And then you guys will begin to play the game. And this is a game that kind of engineers would have had to put together to kind of um, make uh, on Google Chrome. So that's why we thought it'd be fun for you guys to see engineering live in action. So these guys are just choosing their characters and to confirm who they're going to be. And then we have four players in there. And we're going to see who reigns supreme. So it's just going to keep, it's just giving you a little bit of an example of how you play. You kind of use your fingers to make the character kind of run. And if you were doing swimming, you'd, you'd use your fingers to make it swim. So um, we just get into the beginning. So find your marks, get set, go guys. So the um, square, triangle, thing, the jinx in the lead, eight, four seconds. We've got the sunburnt Ian. Always the sunburnt Ian's in the lead. Um, who's at the back? 
Sorry, I'm doing very well at the back. Some bet. <laughs> Some bet Ian's going for it almost. Some bet Ian wins. Woohoo! And the square box with shapes in second. Eight ball third. And I don't know, that looks like a, I don't know, is it crow? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what he looks like, but <laughs> four. So who was, who was, who, who was which? I was sunburnt Ian. Well done! <laughs> So thank you all for playing, Marie. Thank you. For, Marie was playing via Hangout. So you see, you can play that anywhere where you are in the world. So well done, guys. It was lovely speaking to you. I've learned a lot. Do you remember your first job interview? Yes, I was very, very excited, but nervous at the same time. Ah, well, interviewing is a skill like any other. You can always improve. Mm. So, um, well, thank you guys for joining us because then we're going to be joined by Boda Sharp from Boda Sharp Consulting. Coaching. Absolutely. So um, tell us a bit about yourself and your company. Okay, so I run a company called Body Sharp Coaching. Uh, we do consulting and we also do like one-to-one -one life coaching. We run workshops and we base mainly around communications and confidence skills and obviously um, interview skills, which comes from a foundation of communication and confidence. That's it. Well, you've got two minutes to kind of talk about interview skills and let us know, let us know kind of what we should be doing. Right, so I'm Bode Sharp, I'm a consultant, I'm also a life coach and I work with young people, large corporations, small businesses. The reason why I love my job is because of the transformation that I see in the people and the changes that they get in their lives. So I'm going to get straight to it. Um, let's use an analogy today. Getting a job is like getting a part in a movie, okay? And the director has a vision for what the actor is supposed to be like. So if you think about that, when you're applying for a job, they have an idea of what that person looks like, okay? Not physically, but in terms of their character and their abilities and their skills. So I'm gonna talk about the psychology of getting a job rather than the textbook stuff, which you can get in a book. So it's three W's, what, who, and why. Let's deal with the what. What's in it for them and what's in it for you? So when you're applying for a job, they know what's in it for them. So you've got to also understand what's in it for you. And usually a company is looking for somebody who's going to either generate more money for them, they're going to improve the ways of working, or potentially come up with new ideas to make the business run better. And what's in it for you? Sometimes we don't know what we want. So sometimes we have to do a trial and error, or we do a bit of research, or we just assess our strengths and go for what we know that we're good at. So it's a very important to know what's in it for you because the employer already knows what's in it for you, for, for them. So be clear on what's in it for you when you're applying for a job. Secondly, who? Who are they looking for? Well, usually they're looking for somebody who has got great interpersonable skills. Um, so when you get to the interview, it's very important that you make good eye contact and a firm handshake. I don't know if you've ever shaken somebody's hand and it's like they don't want to touch your hand. It's not going to work. You've got to have a firm handshake. They know that you mean business. And when you're in an interview, ask questions. When it's your time to ask questions, ask questions about the person that's interviewing you. What do you enjoy doing? What do you enjoy about the job that you do here at wherever it is that you're interviewing? And get an idea of some of the challenges that you're going to face. And then you can talk about how you would potentially deal with those challenges. And that will impress the person that's interviewing you. So be flexible. Understand that they're looking for a particular type of person. So make sure you read the job spec and you match that particular person that they're looking for. Yeah? And by the way, the person that they're looking for is you. That's why you're in the interview in the first place. So you've got to make sure you do your best to get that job. Why? Why are you? Why are you going to be the person that's going to be for the interview? Well, first of all, they've seen your CV and they've had you in for the interview. So that's the first positive step. Second of all, you have to have a positive and a great attitude. These are the things that most companies like Google or any other company in the world like positive attitude. Character, you know, somebody who has integrity, somebody who knows what they're doing and they're passionate about what they do. So make sure you, you display your hungry, passionate, and patient side, you know, any job is always going to have its ups and downs. You always have to show that you're a patient person. So in conclusion, what? What's in it for you and what's in it for them? 
understand what they're looking for and understand what you're looking for from that situation. Um, who's, who's the best person for the job? You are, because you're interview being interviewed. So make sure that you present yourself in the best way, best way possible. And most of important of all, be hungry, be passionate and be patient and you will get that job. Thank you very much. Fantastic, fantastic. Nice. Great tips. No worries. Thanks. Thank you. It was lovely talking to you. Okay, thank you. See you guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. So if you failed to join us for Google's Top Black Talent a previous episode, then make sure you log on to flavormag.co.uk and our G Plus page because you can find the videos there. We're on Google Plus as Top Black Talent. We're also on Twitter and Instagram as top black talent too <laughs> you can find us everywhere so if you would like to be in the audience for the next show then make sure you go to flavormag.co.uk forward slash tbt there's a form on there fill in your details then you get an email from us telling you where to come what time to come and when and you can also submit questions so if you um just have a question and you can't make it here into the audience then we take those questions there too so thank you for joining us the engineers have been amazing you've been really inspiring I learned a lot. I hope you did too. So it's been another great show and thank you for joining us. Google Top Black Talent was really good. It was very inspiring. I didn't know there were so many top black talent or black men within the engineering industry that had the roles that they had. So it was really, really inspiring and interesting. Very education, yeah. I learned quite a bit from today as well. In terms of the engineering, I, I came in with not much of an idea about engineering. And there have been so many different things that was actually available to actually start doing this stuff. So it was very interesting. Yeah, Top Black Time is always brilliant. Um, it gives you a lot of tips on how to navigate your way into several careers. Um, like today, they talked about you know, the engineering sector and people on there gave out tips on how they got to where they are today.